editing Lula here. I want to just make a disclaimer that my makeup like around the corner of my mouth looks really weird because I had a dry spot right here and it was like impossible to cover it up. So it, my lipstick is not smudged. It just looks like that and it's been annoying me the entire time I'm editing this video. So no one probably actually cares, but I care. So I'm putting this in the video. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm not refilming it. <laughs> If any of you have ever wondered, like, what's inside my head, no, I don't have any of those inside out people in my head. You just open it up and there's one of those boomerang bumpers with the retro toys on a continuous loop. You're watching Boomerang from Cartoon Network. Hi, my lovelies and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be yet another installment of the uh, TV channels series. Now, I know for the last two videos in this series, I did base them off the comment section, but today we're gonna be kind of going back to our roots with um, how we started with Sprout, which was a channel that I just fondly have memories with. And I wanted to give another channel a bit of spotlight that I don't see talked about as much, that was very much prominent in my childhood and stood out because it was so unique, I feel. And that channel is Boomerang. This channel in particular just has like such a special place in my heart. I'm always gonna have those bumpers burned into my brain. And to even see a few comments wanting me to talk about this channel was enough of an excuse because I just love it so much. And the cool thing about this topic is if you're like me and you like clicking on videos where you know nothing about the topic, you see a video that's like 30 minutes long and has a cool thumbnail and you're like, oh, I get to learn about something I know nothing about. So if that's you and you're not nostalgic for this channel, you might still be nostalgic for what's on the channel. Even if you aren't aware of Boomerang, the content that was on the channel, you're probably pretty familiar with, which is Hanna-Barbera. Hanna-Barbera was this animation studio that was established on July 7th of 1957 by the creators of Tom and Jerry, Joseph Barbera, and William Hanna. Together they are Hanna-Barbera. Just by learning that they are the creators of Tom and Jerry, you could have probably guessed that they would continue to help create some of the most like well-known characters in animation, from Scooby-Doo to Yogi Bear. Characters that have really continued to stay relevant even in present day, among several generations. Like the work of Hanna-Barbera was so popular that it was even some of the first animation to really be recognized by like, you know, award shows like the Emmys, for example. So that's the kind of success that Hanna-Barbera saw as an animation studio. And I bring up Hanna-Barbera because they were around for nearly four decades, but Boomerang is basically kind of what happened next. Basically, Boomerang was a spin-off channel of Cartoon Network that launched back in the 2000s. Cartoon Network had launched back in October of 1992 as the first 24-hour channel to fully just consist of animation. You have to rely on acquired content to fill the gaps, and Hanna-Barbera was a huge contributor to this for Cartoon Network. So that's where Boomerang came in. Originally, it started off as a programming block on Cartoon Network, which began on December 8th of 1992. And the block was fully dedicated to older classic shows. So kind of like a throwback block, if you will, which not only included Hanna-Barbera shows, but Warner Bros content as well. So think like the Looney Tunes. Now the Boomerang block had a specific format of airing cartoons that were produced in a certain year every week. For example, if they chose the year 1963, then they would only air shows from 1963. And in the footage I was able to find online of this block and when they would do this, they even included like information or just like fun facts. So it was very like informational too. The block was of course targeted at kids, but also adults, specifically baby boomers since they grew up with the shows and now they could pass them on to their children. So that's why like there was information or fun facts because it's like a teaching moment, bonding moment. Boomerang aired for four hours every weekend, but throughout the block's time on Cartoon Network, they were frequently like changing the start time and the day. First it started as a Saturday block, then it was moved to Sunday afternoons and then back to the early morning and then the Sunday block moved back to Saturday evenings before eventually the block was shortened by an hour. The boomerang block still lasted ultimately for a solid 12 years before in 2004 it was fully replaced by Adult Swim. However, this wouldn't be the end for boomerang. Actually, things were only getting started and would only be expanded upon from here. Backtracking a bit to 2000 and 2001, two major things happened. Firstly, after nearly four decades, Hanna-Barbera was fully absorbed by 
Warner Bros. animation in 2001. Several factors were at play with this, but a big part of this decision came from the recent loss of William Hanna on March 22nd of 2001. Just want to correct myself real quickly, it was actually before Hannah died um, in 2001. And like I said, there were several factors at play, like financial issues being one. I could not find like an exact straightforward answer, and I think that's really because there wasn't one specific reason, but actually multiple. But yeah, sorry for the error here. Hopefully that still makes sense. William, who was 90 years old, had been battling esophageal cancer, which is cancer inside the esophagus. However, just a year prior in 2000, the decision had been made with the help of Turner Broadcasting System to give the Boomerang Block its own channel, separate from Cartoon Network. I couldn't find the exact reasoning, but I kind of suspect the always changing time slot the Block had kind of had something to do with it. Boomerang was clearly hard to manage with more new original series debuting on the channel over the years and the network, you know, needing to rely less and less on acquired content. So when Adult Swim took over in 2004, all of the Boomerang content was just entirely moved to the Boomerang channel. In an interview with LA Times, Joseph Barbera would share his thoughts on Boomerang, saying the following, It's a hell of an idea. For instance, one little incident, I stop into a place and get new prescription glasses. The owner sees my name. He said, are you Barbera of Hanna-Barbera? I used to spend two hours a day looking at your stuff. I still love the stuff and my kids are spending their time watching it. I said, with Boomerang, you'll be able to enjoy them all the time. I get that all the time from fans. They say, I was raised on this stuff and they know the characters, they know them all. Knowing about Hanna's passing like the following year, I'm really glad the two of them were able to witness Boomerang as it launched and like make that decision to have their, you know, content be able to live on with this channel. Joseph Barbera passed away from natural causes just five years later in 2006 at 95 years old, so I'm sure he saw some of its impact. But for me and many other Gen Z kids I'm sure can relate to this, Boomerang is the reason I discovered the world of Hanna-Barbera. Some other shows like The Flintstones or Scooby-Doo, I think my dad actually bought on VHS at the thrift store. And of course, Tom and Jerry, hello, that's like the most iconic show. But just like the concept of the original Boomerang block, my dad chose those shows and bought them on VHS for me as a way to pass them down because he grew up with a lot of them. However, majority of the world of Hanna-Barbera and those shows I grew up with in my childhood, I remember and associate with the colorful and captivating boomerang bumpers. And I say this because there's characters I hardly remember, like what their shows were exactly like, like Huckleberry Hound or Top Cat. I vaguely remember them from the actual source material, but I can still recognize the characters in a heartbeat because of Boomerang. Although I will say, even though I can't tell you what happens in like Top Cat the show, I have a core memory of watching the Top Cat movie that came out in 2011 on Boomerang. I couldn't actually find any proof of the movie airing there online or any promos that show like the movies premiering on Boomerang. So please let me know if you actually remember seeing the Top Cat movie from 2011 on there too. I'm just thinking like that has to be how I saw it because I know I did not like see it in theaters or something. I'm just not really sure why else I would be watching a movie for a show that I hadn't seen. Or actually, I feel like I have seen the show, especially if I was watching Boomerang. I just don't really remember much, but you guys get my point. Um, anyways, moving on. Boomerang's schedule pre-Adult Swim takeover initially had kind of a looping format, which despite the rebrand occurring in 2004, actually lasted until January 25th of 2005. Beginning at 8 a.m. EST and 5 a.m. PST, this looping format had eight hours of programming repeated three times a day. Weekdays, not including Fridays, were regular programming days that consisted of various half-hour or hour-long cartoon programs. Fridays were Friday marathons, which is where a specific cartoon or cartoon character was chosen. Greetings, I am the Chosen. For example, I found bumpers that were nothing but Porky Pig, which was a Porky Pig cartoon marathon. It's time to settle in for a day of nothing but Porky Pig on Boomerang from Cartoon Network. But there were also like generic like Looney Tunes marathons, so it was either or. Doctors say not to eat and run, but they obviously have more dining options than the coyote. A full day of Looney Tunes continues next on Boomerang from Cartoon Network. These takeovers would last the whole day, so whatever was selected was aired for 24 hours straight. So you better hope you like the character or the show that was selected, or you, you were changing the channel. But as of January 22nd of 2005, right before this rebrand, the Friday Marathon 
Bonds became strictly Character of the Month. And I did double check that the Porky bumpers I did find were from February 2002, so they think they just sometimes made it more specific depending on like the day. Plus, I think why this change probably occurred too is I think it's a little less annoying to see content featuring a certain character all day rather than just the same show on repeat. And if you weren't around for these marathons but the concept still seems familiar, firstly, it's all coming back to you. <laughs> Second, that's because later in March of 2007, these types of marathons would be deemed boomer royalty, which are the promos that I remember personally seeing all the time growing up since these remained um, closer to the 2010s when I was actually conscious. And then on Saturdays, just like we discussed uh, with the origins of Boomerang, on Cartoon Network, a calendar year was selected and cartoons from that year were played all day. The year could range anywhere from the 1960s to 1996. Lastly, we have Sundays, which were different. Sundays were deemed boomer action and cartoons were played that strictly featured action and adventure. Some examples include Valley of Dinosaurs, Super Friends, Space Ghost, Johnny Quest, and Battle of the Planets. Now that we're familiar with how Boomerang started off programming-wise, we can get into after this point, which is what most people are familiar with, after the 2004 rebrand. The first notable change is the fact that Cartoon Network's older programming would also be moved to Boomerang. By Cartoon Network's older programming, I mean Cartoon Network shows. This still included like Hanna-Barbera and the Looney Tunes, however, that content had already made a home for itself on the channel throughout 2000 to 2004 pre-rebrand. With this rebrand, the main thing that happened was it really became more of a time capsule because of how they incorporated these older Cartoon Network shows like Dexter's Laboratory or the Powerpuff Girls onto the channel as well. Moving some of their older shows to Boomerang was a good way for Cartoon Network to keep its spotlight on newer content while simultaneously still allowing people to enjoy these shows, which also allowed for new audiences to find them in the process. And why I picked those shows as examples is because I know personally Boomerang is what introduced me to both of them. Heavy on Dexter's Lab because I remember specific like bumpers for it which had plastic toys of Dee Dee and Dexter. Those are engraved into my brain, I swear to god. I loved Dexter's Lab and Powerpuff Girls so much that I remember going out of my way to find these shows on Netflix after seeing them on TV just the first couple of times because that's how good they are. Not even past tense because to this day I agree. And I already know people who grew up with those shows are gonna feel some type of way about me watching them on Netflix. This was my first ever memory with Netflix. This was when Netflix was like very, very new. I actually rarely used it growing up for TV. I preferred to watch shows directly as they were airing live because most of the shows I was watching were shows that were actively airing and that was just the most convenient way to watch episodes. I still feel that way. I hate having to watch a show entirely in bulk once it drops to avoid spoilers nowadays, but Boomerang was different because these were shows that were no longer airing anymore, at least in order and like new episodes. So I resorted to Netflix to be able to consume them through and through to get the full experience. That in itself is a prime example of Boomerang being able to give these shows and Hanna-Barbera content almost a new life. Like Dexter's Lab aired in 1995 and then ended in 2003, and then the Powerpuff Girls aired in 1998 and ended in 2005, which is the year I was born. Yet both shows were still staples in my childhood and most Gen Z kids' childhoods. Also, I want to clarify, I'm not really mentioning Looney Tunes when we're having this conversation because because a lot of Looney Tunes content would actually be phased out from the channel over time, specifically after this rebrand happened. When saying that, it was never really completely, like, permanently gone though. They did make appearances from time to time, but the channel became more focused on Hanna-Barbera and then older Cartoon Network content. What I think sets Looney Tunes apart though is the fact that they've been around since the 1930s, so a lot older than Hanna-Barbera, obviously, and of course Cartoon Network as a whole. Looney Tunes though is one of those things that I can't ever imagine dying out. It's just so timeless and generational at this point. That's not to say though that I am not concerned for the future of Looney Tunes, especially considering the current situation with Coyote vs. Acme. I can't stress enough how badly I want to see that movie. It actually enrages me that Warner Bros can just get away with doing shit like this to movies. The truth is they've done this before and at the moment hope 
is pretty bleak for the future of Coyote vs. Acme. But with that being said, 2024 is still a huge year for Looney Tunes. So I have to highlight while we're here, we are getting our first ever fully animated feature length film from Looney Tunes that will be released in theaters titled The Day the Earth Blew Up. This movie is set to hit theaters in the fall, and with the state of Disney and now DreamWorks lately, we have to rise up and support the fuck out of this movie. If you care about animation, you will support this movie. Not to mention that it's in 2D animation, which, you know, everyone seems to be begging for these days. And rightfully so, because I don't know how much more 3D animation I can personally take. Speaking of Looney Tunes though, despite their absence over time on the Boomerang channel, you remember those iconic bumpers? Don't even lie, I know they're burned in your brain. Well, we have to talk about the voice behind them, Jeff Bergman. Jeff Bergman is a voice actor and impressionist who's been involved heavily with Looney Tunes and Hanna-Barbera, most notably taking on roles like Bugs Bunny after the passing of Mel Blanc, and Fred Flintstone after the passing of Henry Corden. So most likely, outside of his work on Boomerang, you've probably heard his voice. Jeff Bergman truly got to take on the best of both worlds with, you know, Looney Tunes and the world of Hanna-Barbera. So of course they had to have him voice the iconic bumpers. I mean, he's perfect. Jeff even still does videos with the announcer voice from time to time on his Instagram or TikTok, as well as other voices he's done when it comes to Looney Tunes and Hanna-Barbera. Happy 100th birthday, Warner Brothers. Thank you for a hundred years of outstanding entertainment. Wishing you tremendous creative success, all coming back to you from Boomerang on Cartoon Network. Anyway, side tangent aside, Boomerang compared to other channels I've covered in this series had the least documentation, which honestly shocked me. So that's why you might've noticed this video feels more like a conversation and less like a retelling of Boomerang's history. I mentioned this because instead of going over Boomerang year by year, I'm instead gonna just kind of focus in on the different programming blocks we saw on Boomerang once they entered this era because it was arguably their prime. And the first one that comes to mind for me besides Boomer Royalty has to be Boomerang Theater. Boomerang Theater was Boomerang's movie programming block that didn't necessarily have a set time slot or schedule. It originally would air on weekend mornings from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., but the ending time for this block was never really clear because it honestly depended on the length of the movie playing that day. And for this block, you might've noticed I didn't mention any years or dates which is because Boomerang Theater actually is the only block pre-2015 that still airs on the channel. Also bringing this up, I guarantee, this is where I saw the Top Cat movie. Next, we have Boomerandom, which had a super fun concept. Basically, every week on Boomerang, there was a Boomerandom pick of the week, and hence the name, this was randomized, putting our favorite characters into the Boomerandom drawing machine, which was like this, I wanna say bingo machine, like, you know, where you put the balls in and you like twist it. Anyway, when the winner was revealed, then we would get a 60 minute block, of the winning cartoon. Boomerandom would take place on Sundays from eight to nine and was a part of the channel from 2008 to 2010. Then there was Boomerang Zoo, which was a block filled with Hanna-Barbera and Warner Bros. pre-1970 shorts. Some examples included Huckleberry Hound, Snagglepuss, Wally Gator, Adam Ant, and more. Boomerang Zoo would kind of air on and off on the channel until around 2012. And what makes it unique as well is this block has actually aired on both the US and European Boomerang channels. And it's the only block to have aired on both. The next one's kind of specific, but there was Boomerock, which was a marathon of the Flintstones. It actually happened in honor of the show's 50th anniversary back in 2010. Another similar block was Scooberang, which was a Scooby-Doo marathon block that played all the episodes in chronological order and even some feature films like Scooby-Doo Meets the Boo Brothers and Scooby-Doo Zombie Island. Unlike Boomerock, I believe Scooberang happened several times and the earliest I could find was October of 2003, which I suspected was done in honor of Halloween, but I couldn't really figure it out at first. But I looked into it because speaking of Halloween, one thing about me is when it came to the Disney Channel, on an <laughs> kind of unrelated note, I absolutely ate up their, you know, Monstober event. And as I was looking into the different blocks on the Cartoon Network wiki, 
I saw a Halloween one for Boomerang. I didn't remember any Halloween event on Boomerang. Finding that information left me kind of unsettled, honestly, because that would have been right up my alley. So I had to look into it, and basically there was never really a Halloween event that took place on the US channel, only the Latin American channel. And just like I kind of suspected, scubaing that happened in October just basically took its place on the American channel. I mean, the shoe fits, that show is spooky. And when I tried to look for Halloween promos or bumpers, I could not find any besides a 2005 bumper titled Boomerang and a promo for Halloween during 2012, but it was from the UK Boomerang. The only American uh, Halloween bumpers I could find that weren't like scubaing are from an era we are yet to speak of, which honestly makes them the scariest of all. <laughs> However, Boomerang did have a couple other holiday-themed programming blocks. For example, for Earth Day, they had a Captain Planet marathon. Then for Mother's Day, they would air episodes that focused on mothers. So for example, like Judy Jetson or Wilma Flintstone. And finally for Christmas, they had a Christmas party, which was when Boomerang aired a collection of holiday specials, like the Powerpuff Girls' Twas the Fight Before Christmas, Yogi's First Christmas, the Jetsons in a Jetsons Christmas Carol, and more. Hey Earl, you going to your folks this year? No, no Sam. Me neither. I gotta work doubles every night till Christmas. We, we all do, Sam. Sam. Similar to both Boomer Action and Scoobarang, there was also a these meddling kids programming block. This was a 90 minute block of series produced by Hanna-Barbera and Ruby Spears that followed like a similar formula of groups of mystery solving teenagers. So obviously like Scooby-Doo or Josie and the Pussycats, Fang Face, Clue Club, and Speed Buggy. And there we have it. That was majority of the Boomerang programming blocks. I won't say all because obviously this is just American Boomerang, but also again, um, information was pretty scarce when it came to this topic but I did my best to watch promo and bumper compilations to double check that I didn't miss anything. Now, before we get into, you know, kind of the downfall of Boomerang, I do want to mention something that wasn't necessarily specific to Boomerang, but I have such nostalgia for, aka the Cartoon Network Groovies. The Cartoon Network Groovies were a series of music video shorts with a variety of like different characters that would air on Cartoon Network at first and then eventually on Boomerang, which is where I remember them. They would usually air during during Boomerang Theater or just in between programs in general. In total, there are around like 25 of these shorts, ranging from characters like Courage the Cowardly Dog with They Might Be Giants? Yes, They Might Be Giants. My dyslexia caused me to mess up their name in my last one of these. I truly apologize to They Might Be Giants. Anyway, uh, from Courage the Cowardly Dog to Josie and the Pussycats in Music Evolution, that one in like Jabberjaw. Those two I remember constantly. I found myself falling through a rabbit hole of these once I read discovered them in my research and oh my god they were my everything as a kid but I even saw ones that I had not seen so if you haven't seen them all I definitely recommend the watch they are genuinely so charming on that note I have to ask um do you guys remember those corny music video remixes that Disney would air in between their programming I brought this point up actually in my fish hooks video which suddenly does anyone remember when between commercial breaks um, in the early 2010s Disney Channel, they would like put little music videos they made. But basically during the 2010s, they would air these like shitty remixes with clips from their shows. And they were just as annoying as the commercials to me. Don't even get me started on those group Christmas sing-alongs. Oh my gosh, hot take, I think. Those pissed me off so much as a kid. I remember every time they came on, I would mute the TV so I didn't have to hear it. And maybe that's just me because I used to religiously hate musicals. I since recovered from that awful disease, specifically with exposure therapy in the seventh grade when I discovered the art of Hamilton and Be More Chill. But never as a kid did I feel these way about the Cartoon Network groovies because you can just tell like the effort that was put into them. You could say they have the upper hand when comparing the two because obviously the groovies are more unique and you know, they had to be fully animated, their animation. However, my fish hooks example, <laughs> is animation and it was still less than mediocre to me. I don't know. Anyway, now that we've revisited Boomerang at its peak and we have a feel for how things like ran, let's talk about the downfall that would ensue in the year of 2015. One important thing to note about Boomerang is over the years they were actually able to avoid avert channel drift. If you don't know what channel drift is, it's the process of a channel gradually shifting away from its original programming that it started with. From videos I've done on failing TV channels before, this usually happens because 
because things aren't as profitable as they used to be and there's a lack of viewership. This is usually some kind of attempt to still find a target audience despite that. However, due to the nostalgia factor of Boomerang, I believe this helped them avoid this. With the concept of providing these older Hanna-Barbera cartoons, not only did older audiences have access to these classics that they so fondly enjoyed as kids, but people who were parents could then pass them on to their children and those children became fans of the shows. You have to admit, it's an incredibly smart concept for a channel. That's why the downfall it saw is especially devastating, because it did not need to happen, it absolutely could have been avoided. Basically, it all started in February of 2014, when it was announced that thanks to their popularity and demand for original branded entertainment, Turner Broadcasting's animation, young adults, and kids' media offerings would be expanding and undergoing strategic changes. Wow, thanks! What the fuck does that mean? Long story very short, strategical changes were implemented in order to expand Turner Broadcasting System's animated content. The all-cartoon classics, Boomerang, will be aligned worldwide as a family co-viewing network and will be introduced officially this year for ad sales and promotional opportunities in the United States. You know how oftentimes things are like tweaked depending upon the region and country to appeal to different audiences? Well, not anymore. Uh. <laughs> That's what this is. With this change implemented, the 13 boomerang channels from all around the world would be showing the exact same content. So by spring of 2014, fans noticed, you know, the older Hanna-Barbera, like that type of content was moved to the graveyard slots. While Boomerang's daytime schedule suddenly became dominated by programming from the 1990s and later. In the article that discusses these changes by Support Report, they mention the following shows, The Powerpuff Girls, Looney Tunes, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You, Dexter's Laboratory, and Tom and Jerry. Huh, um, notice a pattern, guys? Yup, these shows are either 1990s Cartoon Network classics that were integrated into the Boomerang channel later on, or Hanna-Barbera's most popular shows. And Looney Tunes, um, is there? That feels so horrible to say. It was no longer a part of the channel's programming, okay? I don't see it as an issue. It was just something to note here that's interesting. But the article literally says after listing these shows that Boomerang will be singular in its ability to be appealing to two generations. As kids who grew up on these time-tested shows, parents will be able to share their childhood favorites with their own kids. My first thought here was they're switching things up to appeal to a new generation of parents and their nostalgia, but that sentiment is still confusing me when majority of Boomerang's like programming and Hanna-Barbera shows were still aired for 90s kids. I mean, the oldest millennials would have been 33 in 2014 when this was announced. I just feel like they would have still grown up with majority of Hanna-Barbera cartoons since they were still being broadcasted not only on that Boomerang Cartoon Network block, but Boomerang as a channel. From my last video, I've realized I have quite a few millennial subscribers, so I'm super curious to hear your perspective since, you know, it's your generation in the comments. But for me, it feels like the plot really got lost here because why fix something that isn't broken? And I mean, yeah, like the Hanna-Barbera shows weren't completely axed. They're, they still included some, but they're the most popular ones. But majority were moved intentionally to that graveyard time slot when kids are asleep. Similarly, in my Playhouse Disney video, they did the same thing when rebranding uh, Playhouse Disney to Disney Junior to phase out the Playhouse Disney uh, programming. And the weirdest thing to me is I even found claims that in June of 2014, they were airing shows like Teen Titans Go and The Amazing World of Gumball on Boomerang, as if that doesn't defeat the whole purpose, and as if those shows weren't already airing on Cartoon Network anyway? Isn't the whole point of Boomerang as a channel to air content that's no longer airing new episodes? Like the decision to air something like Teen Titans Go on Boomerang is incredibly confusing when Teen Titans is right there. It feels like we're really losing the plot here, but unfortunately the worst was yet to come. When in October of 2014, it was revealed that the channel would be undergoing a total rebrand to focus on family viewing. To that, I once again say, why fix something that is not broken? When I first read this, I was genuinely like, confused? What do you mean focus on family viewing? How was that the goal here? Is that not the whole point of the nostalgia factor of Boomerang? This is Boomerang from Cartoon Network, a new 24 hour cable network designed for the whole family. What do you think the catchphrase, it's all coming back to you, means? 
It's the memories coming back to the parents watching with their children. They were passing all these beloved shows down to them. Boomerang has always been a timeless favorite with multi-generational appeal. Why do you think, Christina? Maybe, just maybe, like this might be crazy, but maybe it's because of the family viewing aspect of the channel. <gasps> Seeing these channels become a shell of what they once were is always gonna evoke emotion in me, but this has to be like one of the worst I've looked into because not only how much I appreciated this channel and just the style of the channel and the bumpers and the programming themes, but genuinely, this did not need to happen. Like it's confusing why this happened. I, ju I just don't. After the announcement, the rebrand would slowly start to roll out on the Boomerang channels, starting off with Latin America in late September, actually right before this was even announced. It wouldn't actually be until January 19th of 2015 that these changes would actually be implemented into the US Boomerang channel, thus marking the end of an era. I briefly mentioned this, but after the rebrand, the only like remnants of you know, the boomerang we all knew and loved, to survive was Boomerang Theater, the programming block that still airs to this day. As for the colorful and fun bumpers filled with our favorite Hanna-Barbera cartoon characters and classic theme music, that was phased out altogether for graphics that matched Cartoon Networks at the time. These new bumpers still featured some characters, but there was just a whole new approach. It was drastically different. They were fully animated segments in front of the same kind of Cartoon Network color palette at the time. I hadn't seen these bumpers in until researching for this video, and I will say I expected worse, but they just... It's not the same. That unique charm aspect of the boomerang bumpers is completely gone, and to this day is probably still unmatched. Also, is it just me or like the slooshing sounds? I don't even know if I'm describing that right. Are so unnerving to me in these bumpers, like I literally hate that sound, make it stop. But as a little cherry on top to uh, the drastic change of this format, these bumpers, the announcer voice was also changed. Jeff Bergman, as we all know, voiced the announcer segments for the channel in its entirety. And with this rebrand going for a more family-friendly approach, they changed the voice to a child? Grab your ticket and take a seat. It's Boomerang Theater. I mean that with no disrespect, it's just true. Colin Dean, who took over, is the exact same age as me, born in 2005. So at the time he was 10, and I guess if we're being technical, I'm the child still, because he's two days older than me. Anyway, I bring this up because if his voice sounds familiar, it's because Colin also voices Greg in Over the Garden Wall and Lincoln Loud in, I think, season two of The Loud House. Popular show, I've never seen it. I know, you know, child characters, so they have a lot of voice actors, kind of like The Amazing World of Gumball. I also want to clarify, I'm pointing this out not to bash Colin whatsoever, obviously. This change is just, yet again, another confusing and drastic one to note. As this rebrand took place and the programming was switched up, we also saw new original content made for Boomerang. And historically, this was the first time they ever had new original content made for Boomerang. I mean, why, why would they? With the channel's concept being built upon acquired content, after all. What I will give them though is they stuck with generational characters when choosing to make original content instead of making entirely new characters so I think it could have been much worse. With that being said, I have not seen these shows, maybe the Scooby-Doo one, so I can't speak for how good they are. These shows included Bunny Killa, Be Cool Scooby-Doo, Wacky Races, Dorothy Wizard of Oz, New Looney Tunes, and The Tom and Jerry Show. But yeah, as you can imagine, um, all these sudden changes combined made viewers very unhappy, and despite the outspoken an outrage I've seen towards this era of the channel is actually extremely hard to find like information regarding the actual effects it had on the channel. The closest thing I could find was an article comparing multiple channels and their ratings in 2016. According to IndieWire's most watched television networks ranking 2016's winners and losers, Boomerang makes their list at 75, seeing a 24% decrease from 2015, going from 245,000 viewers to just 187,000 thousand viewers in the span of a year since they rebranded. Remember, it was January 2015, so this is exactly a year. Something I also noticed was while I was digging through the internet trying to find more information, I saw a lot of articles from this time period about Boomerang adding more channels internationally, so it seems like their plan globally was somewhat successful, but honestly it's like, at what cost? Because their overall viewership was clearly tanking. And seeing these kind of results was honestly a wake-up call to 
the people who implemented these changes, and they had to choose their next move very wisely. So in April of 2017, we started to see a bit of reversal in regards to changes they made to their programming. Back in spring of 2014, right before the rebrand, a criticism above all in terms of the rebrand was the loss of majority of Hanna-Barbera shows, besides like Scooby-Doo and Tom and Jerry, but those again are some of their most popular. So you'll be glad to know, maybe, in April of 2017, Boomerang would actually launch as a streaming service. With the help of Sundance, who worked at Nickelodeon and actually helped launch the Noggin streaming service just two years prior. <sighs> the Boomerang streaming service was priced at $5 a month and included both classic and current cartoon series. Boomerang's catalog will offer shows from Warner Bros, Hanna-Barbera, Looney Tunes, and MGM animation library of over 5,000 titles, which includes new original series as well as well-known classics. The app kind of started off on the wrong foot, let's just say, because they launched with less content than what was promised. Only a thousand out of the 5,000 promised titles were available at the time of this article. This included highly anticipated titles like the Flintstones and the Jetsons. But to be fair, some of their newer content was also unavailable upon the service's launch, so I don't think this was an intentional or like favoring new content over classics type of situation. It was stated on their website that more content would be added over time, so I would assume this issue has been resolved. But if at the time this happened, you were using the service, let me know what happened. Of course, in recent years, this is obviously less of a problem uh, with the launch of HBO Max in 2020, which made more of that content really accessible to fans. But with launching Boomerang as a streaming service though, more efforts were made to incorporate classic content back into their programming over over the years. Starting in 2017, 2018, although it was really sporadic, and again, just Hanna-Barbera titles that were most popular, it wouldn't really be, to be honest, until 2023 that Boomerang began to actually repair the damage that had been done, making great efforts actually to incorporate classic content back into their programming again, with shows like Jabberjaw, Yogi Bear, Popeye the Sailor, Top Cat, Wacky Races, Johnny Quest, Wally Gator, the Flintstones and the Jetsons returning permanently to Boomerang's lineup. Finally, in one of these videos, we're seeing a happy ending. It's rare, but it is happening. And during 2023, older movies were also incorporated back into Boomerang Theater, which is still continuing to air on the channel. When mentioning the amazing progress that Boomerang has seen recently, I can't not bring up Dave Breyer. I was not familiar with Dave, and I don't even know to the extent of fully what he's done for the channel, but I wasn't even actively searching this out, and his tweet about leaving uh, the channel came up on my timeline, and I wanted to mention him because I felt it was important. Because in the 15 months that Dave worked for Boomerang and was in charge of like their programming schedule, fans have really seen this channel just almost completely transformed for the first time in years. With people like Dave and his impact, we're seeing this channel that really became a shell of what it once was finally get back to its roots again, and that feels so good. It takes one person. It's truly amazing how much of an impact one person can have when listening to what the fans want, and I wish him the best of luck wherever he works next. Back to the programming though, at the same time we saw a huge change on Boomerang, which was the decision to cut down on the amount of old Cartoon Network shows, only focusing on a select few instead. These few, from what I was able to find, tend to be the Powerpuff Girls, Codename Kids Next Door, and Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. In 2024, I don't know if this has changed or they switch these out very often, but that's the select few I was able to find. But the reason this happened was really because um, a new Adult Swim block actually was launched that specifically caters to these types of shows. Titled Checkered Past, the block focuses on older Cartoon Network shows ranging from the 1990s to the early 2000s. Some examples of this include Cow and Chicken, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Dexter's Laboratory, Ed, Ed and Eddie, Courage the Cowardly Dog, and I Am Weasel. So yeah, older Cartoon Network shows just really found a new home and with Boomerang wanting to really incorporate classic Hanna-Barbera shows back into their lineup, this just made sense. Checkered Past would officially join Adult Swim on August 27th of 2023. So this is a very new addition to Adult Swim. I actually hadn't heard of it. I, it's probably because I don't have cable, but if I did, I would be checking it out. One thing about Adult Swim, they always know their audience. I know people are eating this block up. And with that, we're pretty 
pretty much caught up to date on the history of Boomerang. I hope you guys enjoyed. This one was surprisingly like extra difficult to research. There was not nearly as much documentation as I expected going into it. I mean, kind of makes sense. It's just a channel that airs acquired content. I felt like at certain points of writing the script, I was really grasping for straws a bit at certain points. So I hope it was not noticeable. If things were missed, I apologize in advance. I tried my best to do this channel justice because it just meant so much to me growing up. As always, let me know, you know, your thoughts on all things Boomerang. How did you feel about the rebrand? And have you been watching Boomerang recently? Have things improved? In Dave Breyer's tweet, he actually did tease some of the upcoming schedule. And honestly, to me, it looks a lot of fun. To end off this video too, I actually wanted to mention, I stumbled upon a fan project related to Boomerang as I was researching for this video. They're here on YouTube and Twitch and Discord. They're called Boomerang Reborn. On YouTube, they have some bumpers and other content, but the real fun happens on their Twitch. They do these like boomerang streams where they're airing content that would air on the channel where their goal is, you know, to recapture this classic boomerang and bring it back and its charm as accurately as possible. On their Discord, you can actually find updates about the streaming schedule. They hadn't streamed since Christmas, but this week they're actually making a comeback. I believe when I filmed this, they streamed on the second. I don't know if they have any other upcoming ones this week or next week now that this is like coming out on the weekend. But again, all these streams are still up on their Twitch so you can still watch them. So if you felt like reliving your childhood for a couple hours, you have that. Anyway, if you're still here, I really appreciate you making it this far. I wanna take a moment to say thank you so much to my patrons, which yes, that's a totally new thing I'm doing. Please do not feel pressured to join, but if you would like to and you know support me in the process, there's gonna be a lot of fun behind the scenes stuff and early access to new videos. I actually documented the process of recreating a boomerang bumper, which was low-key chaotic. It was chaotic because recreating a specific one was way too hard. So I tried to just incorporate several elements of the bumpers and I think it turned out pretty accurate. With that being said, that's it for today's video and I will see you guys in the next one.